who might be concerned about oxalate overload. What is oxalate overload? Too much of some healthy foods can be toxic. Oxalate overload? Oxalate overload. Oxalate overload. What does that mean? The most dangerous plants for humans, especially today, are those plants that we eat and the toxin in them or the issue with them build up over time. We don't necessarily feel this negative thing the next day. And it isn't because we ate that that day that there's the issue. It's, it's because we ate it that day and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year. Probably everybody in the modern world is eating a diet that is too high in oxalates. Hi, I'm Sally K. Norton. Join me at Meatstock 2025, an ancestral health convention on May 17th and 18th in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Come learn and meet me as well as many of the other special guests. I'll be there to sign your book and you'll get one of my three books for free as part of your admission ticket. This is not gonna be your typical convention. My name is Dr. Bill Schindler. I am the director at the Eastern Shore Food Lab and co-owner and head chef at the Modern Stone Age Kitchen. My background is in archeology span and anthropology, and my focus is on ancestral diets and how to take lessons from our ancestral dietary past and implement them into our modern culinary landscape to improve health and to make sure that we are eating as humans as ethically, sustainably, and as healthy as possible. My first introduction to Sally Norton was when I heard her on a podcast with Brian Sanders years ago. And not long after that, I interviewed her for a summit that I was doing. That single conversation with Sally completely transformed my life. When I learned more about what she was doing, her important work, I, I, I stopped her mid-sentence. And I said, I, I need to share a story with you about an issue that I was having that, that has plagued me for almost 15 or 16 years. I'll give you the quick version of a much longer <laughs> oxalate story. Many years ago, a colleague of mine, a good friend of mine who's an archaeologist, con conducted some research into how groups, Native American groups in Eastern North America, potentially detoxified a plant that was in their diet. And the plant is Peltonia virginica, or the common name is Arrow Arum. And even John Smith, when he came up to Chesapeake, documented that Native Americans were eating this plant. And he documented loosely how he thought they were detoxifying this plant. This is well before I knew anything about oxalates and their dangers. So we engaged in an experimental archaeological study. Uh, we, we harvested a ton of this plant and, and we, were, we, we put it through a series of different, different processing strategies that we thought John Smith uh, was trying to document. And we looked at things under microscopes. And anyhow, we, we came up with this wonderful, I thought, study and we published it as a peer-reviewed article in the Journal of Archaeological Science. It was met with really good reviews afterwards. It, it was a wonderful thing. Not long after that, a forager friend of mine, uh, he and I were meeting up at, and he said, listen, I read your article. It, it, it was great. He says, you know, there's another local plant, a skunk cabbage, that has the same sort of toxicity in it. And in this particular case, it was calcium oxalate raphide. So they look like little bundles of, ne of needles. And the way that they harm you is that when you ingest them, these needles pierce your throat, the you know, mucous membranes, and then release a protease enzyme, and then your throat swells up and you die. So anyhow, he's like, I wonder if we could maybe make a broth out of the, out of the skunk cabbage, and then we could drink the broth, and maybe we get some nutrition and flavor, but not these, whatever that toxin is. Oxalates exist not only as insoluble crystals, but also as oxalic acid. Both these forms exist in oxalate-rich plants. Some of the oxalic acid in a plant moves into the cooking water when you boil it. The diluted acid in the cooking water easily enters the bloodstream after you drink it. I said, I don't know, so try it. So he, he did it and I had, I had a drink of it. Well, to make a very long story short, that was on a Sunday. The next day, I was teaching an archaeological field school back here in Maryland, and I had I had driving the minibus from the college, and I was picked up all the students, and we went to the site we were digging, and all day long we're jumping on shovels and we're digging in the dirt, we're doing all these things, and over the day my foot started to hurt real bad, really really bad, and it was weird to me because I had steel toe boots on. My how did I injure my foot? But yeah, I've been jumping on shovels all day and moving big heavy rocks and doing all those things. Maybe I really hurt my foot. And by the end of the day, my foot hurt so bad that I called my wife and I said, "Listen, I think I broke my foot." And I'm going to drop the students off at the dorms. And as soon as I'm done going to the hospital, it's that bad. And I'm going to get an x-ray. 
She said, okay, wow. So anyhow, I dropped all these students off and they gave me an x-ray and they said, listen, your, your foot's not broken. Uh, you have gout. I said, gout? There is no way that I have gout. And they said, well, that's the only other explanation. You have gout here, take this medicine. And it always bothered me because I didn't eat what I considered a gouty diet. In fact, I was very conscious of my, of my food. I didn't take the medicine and, and it plagued me for a very years and years and years and years I had this issue. A couple of days after that, I started to get really, really, really light sensitive, I mean, severely light sensitive to the point where I was driving with two pairs of sunglasses on top of one another. And then the next day I'm trying to watch TV with my wife at seven o'clock at night where we're on, on the couch and I'm wearing two pairs of sunglasses with tears streaming down my face because I, my eyes were so light sensitive. I go and finally one day, a couple of days later, I'm trying to drive home and I had to pull over and I could barely even dial the phone for her to pick me up because I, I couldn't keep my eyes open in the light. I went to my corneal specialist and he's looking at my eyes and, and I, I, there's two full grown adults holding my eyes open as, as he's trying to look in them because the light was so bright. And he's like, look, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. And I'm like, yeah, something's wrong with my eyes. And he's like, nope, nothing's wrong. He says, take this medicine. It's called Cataralac eye drops. And all they do is they, they're not going to solve anything, but they're like aspirin for your eyes and they're going to numb the effects. So you'll be able to keep your eyes open. He says, but we're going to have to wean you off them as soon as possible. And I said, great, because that's the only medicine in the world that I was taking. And uh, seven years later, I'm, I was still on it twice a day. I couldn't wean myself off these drops. Anyhow, I finally get on the phone with, with Sally. This is years and years and years later. I'm still suffering with my foot. I have this, this issue with my eyes. I'm still taking these eye drops. And I get on the phone with her and, and I started to learn a little bit about more what she did. And I said to her, I said, Hey, I had to, I, wait, wait a second. Let me tell you this story. And I started to tell her the story about my foot and I never finished. And she stopped and she said, let me tell you, they said you had gout. And I said, yes. She said, did they ever test you for uric acid? I said, oh no, they only gave me the x-ray. She says, well, I'm pretty confident you don't have gout from uric acid. You have oxalate gout. I said, oh. So that's when I got off the phone with her and I started diving down a rabbit hole and I realized that one of the places in the, that search that oxalates can store is in your corneas. And I started to look at some of the symptoms. It was exactly the, the light sensitivity issues that I had experienced so many years earlier and was still experiencing was having to take us medicine for it. So I called to my wife and I said, Christina, you know, that time I had that issue with my foot and the issue with my eyes, like how far apart were they? She said, only a couple of days. I said, oh my gosh. So I got back on the phone with Sally and I'm talking to her about it. And I told her what we did with that skunk cab. And she said, look, that was the worst thing you could have done. And you ingest it. And what happened probably was, and I, she said, what was your diet like before that, that moment? And I said, well, you know, I always ate a lot of spinach. I always ate a lot of almonds. Almonds were my go-to snack literally every day. I'd have a handful of almonds because I thought it was something healthy. And we continued this conversation. She said, listen, you were already experiencing this very high toxicity of oxalates in your body. And when you drank that silly tea, it puts you over the edge and it was a cascade of symptoms. So I, I removed the oxalates from my diet. In fact, I, I tend to go a little bit too strong in one direction or another of certain things. I, I probably removed them too quickly. I've, I haven't experienced the, the pain-free life that I've been experiencing since and ever. I mean, it's been amazing. Three years after I took oxalates out of my diet, I started experiencing some dumping symptoms, which were crazy. And I had oxalates coming right out of my skin around my mouth, crystals of oxalates. And it's happened twice to me. But other than that, my life has completely changed because of that one conversation with her. And here, here's the weird thing. Anything that I've had that turns out that I'm confident now were uh, symptoms that there were oxalate related were things that when I went to the doctor, they made me feel stupid. They're like, no, this isn't the case. I'm like, well, this is how I've been feeling for three years. I'm like, no, well, it's, it's, it's nothing. I, I can't identify it. So it must be nothing. And, I, and every time I left feeling like, here, you just have gout, take these pills. Or no, there's nothing wrong with your eyes, but you know, two grown adults are having to hold my eyes open during the exam. But you know, for, for all of us who have been experiencing them and seeing, you know, feeling what, that, what it feels like to deal with the pain every single day, and the mental anxiety about not knowing every day. And then that sort of embarrassment from the doctors who we're supposed to trust making us feel stupid to then take oxalates out of our diet and have literally our entire lives change. I mean, that's the power of the work that Sally Norton is doing and, and the ability to change lives on a daily basis. I obviously dove deep into her book when it came out and was incredibly excited when the data companion came out and, and I reviewed an earlier copy of this and several copies since. 
And I am so excited that she's finally getting this information into the hands of so many people. To me, one of the most important points of this book is it is the most up-to-date information on the oxalate contents of different foods. And what Sally has done here is put literally in our hands the information we need to adjust our diets for a low oxalate diet, ensure that we're doing it in the proper way. And one of the issues that I've had for years is when I'd, I dove deep and tried to get as much information as I could from the internet on oxalates, and unfortunately, none of it, none of it was complimentary. It, and, and a lot of it was was opposing. And we would get, you know, I'd get information on oxalates and the oxalate content of certain foods here, and then look up on another website, and those numbers were completely different. And then I would go to another website, and they'd tell me that oxalates weren't that dangerous, and we didn't really need to worry about it. And one said we should eat chocolate, one said we shouldn't eat chocolate, and it was a very difficult time for me because. I was in a place where I was ready to do anything that I needed to do to heal, and I couldn't get the information that I needed. It isn't just a list of a whole bunch of a whole bunch of numbers or a whole bunch of tables. There are direct takeaways. To me, what I like best about this book and the way that it's formatted, it's actually color coded, and you can see here at the bottom. You know, green is obviously low, and 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 red is extreme, and the ability at a very quick glance to be able to see where that red is and to know immediately how to, you know, that these are foods that should obviously be avoided. There are very easy to follow recipes and very easy to follow recommendations for how to adjust your lifestyle to enjoy a lower oxalate diet. Every single plant on this planet has some level of toxin in it. Some of them will kill us outright. Some of them really the minute toxin or the minute amount of that food that we're eating really don't cause that much of an issue. But then there's there's issues like oxalates where over time they can build up and wreak havoc. Almost everybody in this country and probably everybody in the modern world is eating a diet that is too high in oxalate. So this is, again, another reason why, you know, the information that Sally has out is so incredibly valuable and is literally saving lives. In our own lives, we don't see the toxicity of our diets. Even professionals like Bill and I, who are very well acquainted with the toxic potential of plant foods, can get sick from oxalates. This knowledge has been left out of our professional training, which is why you can't turn to the usual experts for help. Like other professionals, our doctors do not know enough about the toxic potential of oxalate. And when any one of us gets sick on oxalates, it's not our fault. We need better information. Now that we do know, it's our obligation to share our hard lessons. Please help us by liking and sharing this video today.